Before starting this video, this video is going to be split up into two parts. I tried to muscle my way through this video, but combining the fact that it took about 10 days to do the initial recording, and it's taking so long to edit this video, especially with the fact that the developer whose games I'm reviewing is continuing to pump out new games, it's hard to keep up and put it all into one episode. I honestly didn't think that this video was going to take this long to make. This was a gross misjudgment on my part for thinking that I could complete this so quickly. This is going to be part one of the video and I will soon start working on part two once I get the time. Currently, a lot of other things are happening when it comes to the YouTube scene and it's really hard to keep up with all the content that I am making. That's the main reason why I've been uploading a lot more on this channel. This will cover about the first half of the games that I'm reviewing and I'll be working on the second half when I get the time. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy what I've made so far. Hey folks, how's it going? It's Game Webcam. Welcome back to another episode of The Roview, a series where I take a look at various different Roblox games and rate them based on how good or crappy the game is. But before we can get into the game, or should I say games, that we will be Roviewing, I want to make a few announcements. First off, because YouTube Shorts are now a thing, I've decided to take the Roview and I created a spin-off series that will be alongside it called Roview Shorts. The purpose of Roview Shorts is that it pretty much follows a lot of the similar elements of the Roview, but it is condensed all the way down to one minute. I've already created two Roview Shorts. The first one is an episode of a game called Copyrighted Artists, which you can click the top right corner if you want to see that episode. And the second one is of another game called Vans World, which you can also view by clicking the top right corner. These are fast-paced videos and aren't intended to be full reviews. Sometimes I will omit certain details if I must to keep the review one minute long. I plan on making review shorts on games that I don't feel like deserve to have a full episode. But here's the thing about review shorts, even if you are subscribed to the channel and have the bell icon enabled, which I hope you do, YouTube doesn't actually notify subscribers if I upload a YouTube short. So if you do want to be notified when I do upload a Roview short, you will have to join my Discord server. A link will be provided in the description down below. And while you're there, feel free to say hi. Do not worry though, I will still make full Roview episodes, but generally there will be more Roview shorts than full Roview episodes. The main purpose behind the Roview shorts is to challenge myself to make shorter content on my channel, because I get that not everybody is a fan of watching 30 to 40 minute long videos. And in addition, because Roview shorts generally take less time to make, it's a series I can fall back on if I am struggling to get a full video up on the channel. So again, be sure to join the Discord server if you want to be notified of a new short being released. The other thing that I do want to address is that I was actually going to review another game. You see, there was another game that caught my interest called Generic Role Playing Game, and my friend Jocelyn, the original creator of the review, and I decided to team up to play the game together because we were planning on collaborating when making the review for this game. However, because of our busy schedules, this episode of the review fell apart before we could even start. That isn't to say that this episode won't be happening, but it is going to be an episode that will take a lot longer to make, collaboration or no collaboration. In the meantime, there have been a few games that did catch my interest and I could make standalone review episodes on. One of them being a series of games that I will be reviewing this episode. So if you couldn't already tell by the title of this video, I'm actually going to be reviewing multiple Roblox games in this episode, which is unusual from the previous episodes of the review where I reviewed just one Roblox game. However, I decided to review all of the games in this one episode because I feel like reviewing just a single game on its own would not only make the length of this video super short, but it would also make it a lot harder to make comparisons amongst these games. The games I plan on reviewing are all made by one Roblox developer, who goes by the name of Platinum Falls. Before we can focus on the individual games, I need to uncover some background on who this developer is. 
So, who is Platinum Falls? Now, Platinum Falls is just the Roblox username that this developer goes by, but if you've ever taken a look at the groups he's involved in or his YouTube channel, he goes by a different name, and this is a name you're probably more familiar with. Fat Paps. And instead of calling him Platinum Falls from now on, I'm going to be always calling him Fat Paps. The funniest thing is, I actually am familiar with who Fat Paps was before he even started his YouTube channel. Back in late 2014 and early 2015, before he even uploaded his first video for his Roblox hobbies, Fat Paps was just another bait and switch Roblox developer. Fat Paps would always build overly generic and simplistic obbies, but would often switch the thumbnail and title of his game to bring the illusion that it was a completely separate game. Sure, he did occasionally switch up the obby and made a new one, but at the time he never really stood out from other bait and switch developers. What made Fat Paps stand out from the others is that he decided to make a video trailer for his Roblox hobbies, and if you've played Roblox for a long enough time, you've more than likely have seen this video. Welcome to my obstacle course. <laughs> Where you jump over things, climb things, jump over more things, slide into a giant toilet. Yum, yum, yum. But watch out for these water strips. Please, it's only water. Also, check out my other worlds. Yeah. Let's see what the fans have to say. I like the part where you uh, jump over things. Yeah. What I just showed you was the video that he put as the trailer for his bait and switch hobby. However, there was a catch to setting a video trailer for a Roblox game. You see, nowadays, setting a custom thumbnail is free and you could do a video trailer for 500 Robux, but back in 2015, these prices used to be higher. Uploading a custom thumbnail back then for your Roblox game costed 20 Robux, but that was nothing in comparison to setting a YouTube video as your trailer. To set a trailer for your game, you had to spend 1,000 Robux, which in modern times values to around $10. But there was another limitation as well. The trailer that you attached to your Roblox game had to be 30 seconds or less in length, which is why when you look at the initial obby trailer from Fat Paps, it was exactly 30 seconds in length. However, attaching the game trailer to his Roblox hobbies are what started killing off his bait and switch tactics. Even though people will still click on the ever-changing thumbnails and titles, they saw this exact same trailer every time they begin to click on them. And because it was so memorable, it gave people an idea that they were being tricked before they even clicked the play button. And this began a low point for the Fat Paps obbies, as it's clear that bait and switch at this point was a dying strategy. People overall started catching on to the bait and switch tactic, and this was around the time when the Roblox developer forums were just beginning, so it was much easier for developers to call out other developers for bait and switch tactics. Fat Paps knew that if he wanted to survive as a Roblox developer, he had to drop this strategy and he had to make himself stand out. Fortunately, there was one thing that really helped Fat Paps stand out as a creator, and that was his overall brand. You see, Fat Paps developed his aesthetic by trying to accomplish such complicated features through basic Roblox primitives such as your spheres, cubes, and other Roblox well-known meshes. This is especially most notable when he tries modeling people's faces, as while it looks detailed, it also looks quite grotesque. It's an example of Uncanny Valley, where you try to make something look realistic, but you fail in the process and you make something that's unsettling or creepy. 
In addition, Fat Paps furthered his brand by starting to upload skits on his YouTube channel. He initially uploaded four skits to his YouTube channel, The Smelly Sock, Exaggerate, The Spider, and Pooh Man. I mean, god f damn it, dude. What the hell is this bullcrap, man? I mean, here's the thing, I remember watching these videos when they first came out, and I thought that they were alright, but watching this now, these videos have aged like milk. Like, these videos are really bad. I have a hard time telling if the acting is bad on purpose, or if this dude is just really bad at acting. The overall production on these videos are painfully bad. The Smelly Sock is basically just a cheesy fighting video with a ton of out of place references and corny jokes. Exaggerate tries to communicate a somewhat realistic message, but just lathers it with a ton of cheesy editing and random equals funny sort of humor. The spider, in my opinion, is the best one out of the four because the humor in this video is so bizarre that there were certain points where I actually got a good chuckle out of it. And Pooh Man, you should pretty much get a good idea of what this video is just from the title and thumbnail. It's Toilet Humor 101. He fights a man made out of poo and defeats it by making noises at it. Yeah, this video makes absolutely no goddamn sense at all. So, as you can tell, these videos really didn't age too well, and that's why most of them sit at less than a million views as I'm recording this. Then later on, he released two more videos, one of them being a 21 second video of Platinum Falls making a dad joke, and the other one being a short Roblox skit of him visiting his grandma's house to eat some cookies, only to end up being completely vored to death. Now, this is a video where his uncanny style is used, and this was his first successful video on the channel. It was by this point where Fat Pass was able to finally establish his style as a content creator, and instead of making more skits, for some reason, he starts to become a Let's Player. I actually went out of my way to watch a couple of these videos, and these are videos that don't really stand out to me. However, granted this was 2016, where Roblox was really starting to take off on the algorithm, so Let's Play content was much lower quality at the time. Many of his Let's Play videos were hit or miss, with some of them performing quite well and others, not so much. I mean, you have to keep in mind that he is competing with many other channels that are trying to accomplish the same thing, including me at one point. He certainly did better than me, that's for sure. However, I can tell you the reason why some videos performed quite well and others didn't. You see, what Fat Paps did to try and get his YouTube channel to blow up was he actually tried to advertise his YouTube channel in a small banner on the top of his obbies. I'm not gonna lie, advertising his YouTube channel through his obbies was a pretty clever strategy. It's clearly worked as the Fat Paps channel broke through 100,000 subscribers quickly at the time, and his channel currently sits at 350k subs, and he's still getting subscribers. However, in mid-late 2017, Fat Paps was starting to slow down on his uploads, and it seems like there was no explanation on why this was the case. After uploading Roblox Evil Hospital Obby at the beginning of 2018, Fat Paps disappeared for about 8 months and there was no explanation as to where Fat Paps went as a content creator. Fast forward to October 2018 and Fat Paps uploads a quick video saying that he was going to start uploading content on his channel again. But this only goes on for two videos before he stopped uploading again for two years. A few months ago, Fat Paps made two uploads to his channel of some weird short clips that are absolutely cryptic and don't really tell us anything. 
He claims that he is back, but I don't really think he is. Let's be honest, I think the reason why Fat Paps started a YouTube channel was to try and establish his brand, to make him stand out from the other Obby creators at the time, and I would certainly say that he succeeded in what he accomplished. His obbies tend to be the go-to obbies for many Roblox Let's Players, so he is moderately successful as a Roblox developer. When I take a look at many of the videos that Fat Paps has created, they aren't all that great. Of course, take my statements with a grain of salt because I'm not a fan of most Roblox Let's Players in general. I think Fat Paps is much better off being a Roblox game developer, as he is a much better game developer than a YouTuber. Throughout many of the obbies I'll be reviewing, you'll be seeing plugs for many Let's Players in his own YouTube channel, and I think he does this as a way to pay homage to the Let's Play community. But, to be honest, I find most of the plugs out of place and just quite annoying in general. We don't know if Fat Paps will ever make a true return to his YouTube channel and start uploading consistently again, but I wouldn't count on it. Anyways, I think now it is time that we actually start focusing on the obbies that he's created. So yes, I'm going to be reviewing all 14 different obbies that he has available on his profile. Originally, it was 13, but as I am recording this video, he actually made a new horror obby, as it is spooky month. Before going into each individual game and reviewing it, let's observe these games from a surface level. When you take a look at the thumbnails for each of these games, you can tell that they are quite flashy and misleading. This isn't too far off from what Roblox obbies used to do in the day, as they would also use flashy and misleading thumbnails to grab your attention. The thumbnails here, though, seem to have some relevance to the overall theme that the obbies follow, so it's not too misleading, but I could still see someone mistake this for another game rather than an obby. As for the ratings of this game, you can see that some of the ratings for these obbies are absolutely atrocious. I hardly have seen Roblox games get a rating that is below 50%. But if your game is getting ratings in the 30th percentile, it tells me one of two things. This game is getting dislike botted to give the game an ultra low rating, or the game must really be that bad to deserve a rating this low. Now, when it comes to Roblox ratings, obbies are the genre that get it the worst. This is mainly because obbies are a really tired out genre at this point, and they're some of the easiest games that you can make. You don't even need to have any scripting knowledge to create an obby, because that's how easy they are. However, making a typical obby doesn't fly in modern day Roblox, as they need to have some paradigm shifting change in order to make the game stand out. One good example is the Tower of Hell, an obby game where the courses are randomly picked from a set of developed courses and then randomly arranged to create unique towers for people to play. However, when we take a look at Fat Pap's obbies, he tends to utilize detailed maps and a storytelling element to try and make his obbies stand out. And even then, the ratings for these obbies don't make a whole lot of sense, as some of the better obbies have lower ratings than obbies that are much worse in quality. While I do believe a good chunk of the dislikes are genuine, I feel like the reason why the ratings don't make sense is that little kids tend to play these sorts of obbies. Kids that are so young that they don't know that a thumbs up means good and that a thumbs down means bad. It's because of this that it's really difficult to tell if the ratings actually reflect the quality of the game. But hey, that's why I'm here, right? I'm going to be reviewing all 14 of these obbies and giving them each a rating. 
I'm not going to be counting get to the top in this row view because this game deviates from all the other obbies in the fact that it's a round based and replayable game. So it wouldn't make sense to compare it to any of the other games that we're going to play. Games are going to be rated in two different ways. The first way is going to be your typical numeric rating that I have done in other episodes of the row view. But the second way is going to be through a list. I'm going to be directly comparing these obbies to each other by ranking them into a list to show you which of Fat Pap's obbies are the best in quality and which ones are the worst. Alright, so I'm going to start reviewing these obbies from the bottom all the way to the top. So we are going to start with Escape the Castle Fortress. Now, Escape the Castle Fortress, in terms of its quality, tends to match with a lot of the later releases that we'll be looking at. I can tell that this isn't the original obby that was supposed to be here because the creation date dates all the way back to 2014, meaning this is the original place where the bait and switch obbies took place. And considering that I have this game disliked on my main account, it tells me that there was a game that was previously here that I did not like. More than likely, we are looking at a remaster or a remake rather than the original product or any of the obbies made before it. The obby starts off with a title card, fancy, and waking up in what seems to be a dungeon cell. Walk out of the cell and head to the end of the corridor and the path you're walking on gives way. Up ahead of you is an abandoned room with a pool full of lava where you jump on various different objects and platforms to progress. You'll probably notice that at the beginning of many stages in this obby, you will notice a random NPC character that you can walk up and speak to. It's clear that the dialogue in this game isn't meant to drive a story, but rather assist the player in case they don't know what to do. I mean, later on in the obby, the NPC sometimes changes to a completely different character that is never seen again. It, it just reinforces my belief that another good reason that the NPCs are here is to give an appeal to a younger audience, as a younger audience is going to be more engaged with a game if they have a buddy that they can talk with throughout the game. I mean, after all, who doesn't like completing adventures with a companion? And this is not going to be the only obby that does this. There's going to be several other obbies throughout the series that will be using a companion to help guide the player in their efforts. After going through some spike traps, bonking a guard on his head, and walking up a flight of stairs, you enter a room where you need to find a key to unlock a door. One of these keys is hidden in one of the chests in the room, which is one of the chests in the back. Now, I was only lucky because someone else managed to find the key for me, but one type of level that I really hate in obbies is ones that take absolutely no skill to do and you have to trial and error the solution. That pretty much is what this level is and I really don't like it. Jumping over a tripwire to avoid certain death and climbing up a ladder, you encounter a sewer and you have to get around to the other side. One praise that I'm going to give the game so far is that it does a nice job with incorporating details into the map design. Combined with the audio that gives ambience to the place and it is actually somewhat immersive. Some of the models do look quite basic but these maps overall are very pleasing to look at and I will give Fat Paps credit here. And this game actually continues that demonstration after walking up a few more stairs and you finally see the outside for the first time. This is where the map design really shines here. Now, I know there aren't a whole lot of fine details, but it is detailed enough to establish an environment in some basic immersion. Anyways, continuing on with the obby, you just lower a drawbridge and you just fight some guards. I don't really understand why jumping on a guard would knock them down, considering that they are wearing a metal helmet that would sort of prevent this from being possible. I'm assuming it's because it's an affordance where jumping on top of enemies kills them, popularized of course by games like Super Mario Brothers. It makes sense with the skeleton guards because they're skeletons that shouldn't even be standing to begin with, 
but definitely not fully armored guards. I feel like using a melee weapon would have done the job a lot better than just simply jumping on their heads. Anyways, after you stomp on the guards and go through some bear traps, you just do more parkour. And there it is, a plug to the Fat Paps YouTube channel. This is going to be one of many plugs you'll be seeing throughout this episode. In fact, I'll even have a list on which YouTubers are plugged with each obby because why not? After traveling through a hot lava cave, avoid touching the floor in a cave, and going down a flight of stairs, you're taken to a cave with a flowing stream and you have to ride a boat, surviving many boulders sticking out of the downstream and falling metal balls. Again, this is another course that takes no skill to do at all, but it is a pretty joyous ride and it's reliable because I only failed once after like three different playthroughs of this hobby. After your raft gets launched to the other side and falls apart, you pull a lever and have to travel up through an elevator. It's clear that the raft level and this elevator are supposed to transport you to a different part of the map and help hide bigger courses without them being too obvious. And I will say, it is done quite well. At this point, I don't think I should have to describe every course that is in the game because I do want you to explore the games for yourself, but I'll share a few more courses that did stand out to me. Now, there is a tower with independently rotating segments where you just have to jump onto the platform above. Still a basic course, but it is a little creative. However, there is a course where you do ride a horse and jump across different platforms. This level is really well designed because it fits with the game's theme, it's not too hard, and you get a really nice view of the castle from outside. In my opinion, this is the best level in the obby course, and if there were to be a game full of levels that were like this, that would be a game that I would enjoy playing. <coughs> <laughs> speed run. After entering the castle and doing a few more obstacle courses, you are on a huge bridge with a big fiery red dragon on the other side. And oh boy is his breath hot. Just avoid the flames and hide in the open pockets as quickly as possible to not die. Again, it sticks to the theme really well and it is quite a creative course overall. After entering the castle and traveling to the top, you quickly enter an arena where you have to defeat 20 different guards. This is the final course of the game, and it makes for an excellent final course as well, to the point where it almost doesn't feel like an obby. It's quite forgiving, and you won't have your progress reset if you do manage to die, which, considering you don't heal and the hitboxes can be a little finicky, you're pretty much going to die once, for the most part. After defeating 20 guards, a hatch opens. Uh, you just have to go through the hatch, and when you go to the end of the corridor, you'll notice that there is a door on your right-hand side. Now, if you picked up a metal key that was at the beginning of the game, opening this door would have led you to a chest that just grants you a secret badge. I'll talk about secret rooms and hidden badges in a little bit because they are a recurring theme with these obbies. Other than that, you've pretty much beaten the obby at this point. Which is kind of weird because to beat the obby, you pretty much had to go back to the castle and finish the game. I mean, you were pretty much outside of the castle when you were riding the horse, and yet you were somehow riding back into the castle. The game is literally called Escape the Castle Fortress, not Defeat the Castle Fortress. Also, at the end of this obby, there are two plugs for a channel called It's a Dave and Jack D Games, leading to a total plug count of three.
This is voiceover game webcam here, here to give you a second clarification, but with the wonders of my voice instead of text on a screen. So one of the things that I overlooked when reviewing this obby is that throughout this obby there are creative ways that you can die. One of these being tripwires that you have to avoid triggering, otherwise you set off a death trap. I really like this concept, but the problem is that setting off the death traps are done server side and not client side. Why is this a huge problem? Well, this gives players an opportunity to troll other players and prevent them from progressing. The reason why I didn't catch on to this much earlier is that for most of my playthroughs, I managed to deal with nice people who didn't deliberately troll me, so I never noticed. When I was replaying this game another time so that I could research how microtransactions worked, I came across another player who wasn't all that nice to me. He would deliberately break tripwires and activate the traps to kill me in the process. This can be quite annoying and ruin the experience of Abby because it promotes this sort of troll behavior. We don't see this problem in later obbies because not only are death traps not a thing for the most part, anything like falling platforms are done client side so you can't troll other players with the game's mechanics. Unfortunately, it's because of this issue that I'm actually going to be lowering my rating for this game. I was originally going to give this game a 7 out of 10, but because this is a problem that can ruin the experience, I'm going to lower the score to a 6 out of 10. It's still a nice game though, and I still recommend and you play it. Alright, let's continue the episode. For the first obby, this is definitely one of the best obbies of the entire series. There were good environments, the obstacle courses had good variety, and you could easily follow along this obby and have an enjoyable experience out of it. I'm going to be placing it third on the list of best to worst. It is a pretty good obby overall, but I think there are two other obbies in this series that I think just do a tad bit better. Now before I start reviewing the second obby in this series, I want to spend some time to talk about recurrences throughout most, if not all, of these obbies. I've already mentioned a couple of them so far, but I want to talk about the rest of them just so that I don't have to keep mentioning these for every obby I review. The first and foremost thing that I want to talk about is microtransactions, because this entire series is very bizarre with how microtransactions work. Now, for every time that you die in one of these obbies, a buyable item or game pass is randomly selected from a set of purchasable items and you are given a prompt on the top of your screen whether you want to purchase the item or not. This aggressive monetization is quite annoying and it can be unbearable at certain points. However, these prompts are not the official purchase prompts that Roblox shows you when you are about to buy an item, which means that if you were playing this with a controller, which I was throughout my entire 3 hour gameplay that you can see for yourself by clicking the top right corner, you will not be making accidental purchases and losing money. I will still be docking a few points overall from these oppies because aggressive monetization is a huge turnoff when playing any game, and it just makes me want to stop playing that game immediately. But let's talk about the actual microtransactions themselves. Usually, when a game lists a microtransaction that costs Robux, a site-wide currency that people have to buy with physical money, usually that microtransaction is going to have relevance to the game. However, when you take a look at most of the microtransactions that these obbies have to offer, these are microtransactions that have absolutely nothing to do with the actual game itself. When you take a look at the game passes that these obbies have to offer, some of them are just so laughably stupid, it makes me wonder why Fat Paps even added them in to begin with. They are essentially as useless as Admin Command's game passes, which only exist because it delivers short-term satisfaction to mindless young children who don't know how to spend their money wisely. However, that is not the worst part of these microtransactions. There is a separate menu dedicated to... Can you guess it? Pets. Now, here's the thing. 
I ridicule simulators for the overusage of pets. Like these obbies, pets in simulators have nothing to do with the actual game, and they are only there to cash in on the hype of pets. However, the difference between pets in simulators and the pets that you purchase in Fat Paps obbies is that simulators at least try to justify the usage of pets by loosely tying them into the mechanics of the game, whether they do things for you or just sit there being a lazy multiplier. However, there is absolutely no justification as to why you should buy a pet in these games. They do not change any of the gameplay aspects at all. All that they do is just sit around and look pretty. I mean, you have to even equip them as tools and keep them equipped in order for the pet to even show up, which is an honest embarrassment and poor implementation of a pet's product. Yes, I actually went out of my way to purchase some microtransactions to research this, and it costed me 200 Robux. I bought these microtransactions just so you don't have to. Well, I'm pretty sure many of you Roblox developers are going to come in and justify this by saying, Well, game webcam, pets are just a cosmetic purchase. It's not necessary to purchase them. Listen, I am fine with cosmetic purchases in games that are meant to be replayable and have a long replay value. Most modern games on Roblox have some sort of replayability, which can justify buying a cosmetic purchase because that is something that can last for quite some time. However, this is an obby. Obbies are not meant to be lengthy and replayable. They are a simplistic format meant to be played one time and one time only. The only replay value that you're going to get when playing obbies is revisiting them years later when trying to go through a nostalgia trip, but other than that, obbies have little to no replay value. Now, these obbies do try barebone attempts to make them replayable, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Nevertheless, cosmetic microtransactions have no justification being in an obby, unless these cosmetics were transferable across games. Now, if you thought that the pets were the worst part of the microtransactions, oh, you were so dead wrong. So, any pets and items that you purchase from the server shop are what Roblox developers like to call developer products, which are meant to be purchases that give something like a one-time boost, additional currency, a quick revive, etc, etc. Developer products are meant to be purchased over and over again, as you cannot own a developer product. That is a huge problem, because pets and items from the server shop only last until the end of your playing session. If you leave and rejoin the game, you will not keep those items. The fact that Fat Paps honestly thinks that people shouldn't own cosmetic items is absolutely disgraceful, as cosmetic items are some of the best examples of things that should have ownership. Again, I purchased these items so you don't have to. And the only reason why I shouldn't heavily slash the scores on these ratings is that they do not give the user any advantage. If these microtransactions were to have been pay to win, the best rating that I would have given these games is a 4 or a 5, even if these obbies were complete masterpieces. Now, game passes, on the other hand, do actually stay with you when you rejoin the game, but that's because game passes are meant to be one-time purchases that the user can actually have ownership of. However, game passes do not transfer to other obby courses. I feel like with any cosmetic purchase such as pets or some essential game passes such as a speed or gravity coil, these should be one-time purchases that should transfer across all Fat Paps titles. That way, it would give some justification as to why people should buy these to begin with. The main takeaway from this is, do not buy any microtransactions from a Fat Paps obby. Even if it is tempting, just don't. Considering they are only for one game and some you don't even get to keep forever, it's not worth spending Robux on any of these microtransactions. I'm going to repeat this one more time. 
I bought items in these games so you don't have to. The other big thing that I do want to talk about is the pathetic attempts to try and prolong the gameplay. Unfortunately, this is an issue with the obby format in general. Once you have completed an obby, there's really no point in continuing playing the game. Because completing an obby is similar to completing a puzzle. You mainly get a lot of the action figuring out where the pieces go and putting the puzzle together. But once you've completed the puzzle, there's nothing else to do and that's when you drop it to do other things. Conventionally, what obbies try doing is they try to establish little hangout spots and they also give the winners really overpowered items so that they could roam the obby like god. Now, there are a few different techniques that Fatpaps does to try and establish replayability. As you saw in the first game, the first strategy is to establish some hidden room. It's an arbitrary hidden room throughout the obby that players have to find. However, this is an ineffective strategy because when you do manage to find the hidden room, all that you're rewarded with is just some lazy Roblox badge. So searching for the hidden room is all for nothing. A few of the later titles that we'll go over do a variant of this strategy where they hide X amount of hidden parts throughout the obby so that people have to go around and find them. And don't get me wrong, some of these are pretty well hidden, but it leads to the same outcome of just being rewarded a silly, useless badge. I mean, unless you are an absolute completionist, nobody is going to go out of their way to do these tasks. The next strategy is that instead of giving you free items at the end of the obby, what if you had to pay in-game money to get those items? That is what the games Escape the Hotel, Rob the Casino, and Rob Mr. McRich's Mansion do. You obtain this in-game currency by collecting the various different tokens that are scattered across the obby. However, I think this method is even sillier than the first method because most obbies will just give you these sorts of items for free. By gatekeeping these items through a paywall, it just adds another useless objective that would only worry the completionists. One of the better strategies that some of these games do is by adding different modes. For example, Timed Trials is where you replay the obby, but you only have a certain amount of time to complete it, and you want to complete the obby as fast as possible. Now, I didn't get to try this out due to the lack of time, but it's definitely something worth doing if you want people to continue playing the game or replaying the same obby over and over again. I have two suggestions on how this aspect of obbies could be improved. The first one is going to relate to the next game we'll go over, so I'll save it for that game. But I think a really good strategy would have been to take something like the in-game token aspect or the hidden parts, and by collecting all of those hidden parts or enough tokens, you get access to an expansion pack of the obby with 10 to 20 more courses. When you complete the obby, you could tie it into the Fat Paps YouTube channel by showcasing some hidden content or some behind the scenes content that you couldn't show publicly on your channel. Because not only would it let people continue playing your game a bit longer, but it would also reward the player for completing it by showing them something exclusive, along with benefiting your YouTube content and channel. A few smaller things that I do want to say is that these obbies clearly aren't meant to be difficult. I think Fat Paps designed the obbies to be quite easy, not just because little kids don't start smashing their keyboards and spam the game with dislikes, but also so that the story aspect is something that anybody can enjoy. Now, I don't care too much about difficulty, but if your obby is clearly too easy or too hard, then it does sort of become a problem in that sense. But because these obbies are meant to deliver a story and not so much focus on the gameplay aspect, I'm not going to focus too much on difficulty here. Another thing that I do notice is that some obbies show the stages that people are on and others don't at all. Now personally with how these obbies are made, I don't think it makes any sense to show which stage the player is on as it would create a more seamless experience for the player if we just don't publicly show the stages. 
Also, there is a recurring theme throughout these obbies where you're eaten by creatures or people and you have to travel their innards. Now, I understand that was a common trope back in early Roblox obbies because it made for good clickbait. However, as an adult, when I think of going inside someone and being eaten, this reminds me of a very real fetish that people actually have. Now, I'm sure most kids will not see it, but I could definitely see this as an adult, and the fact that Fat Paps continues this tradition even so far as to have it on his YouTube channel, it definitely should raise suspicion on the kinds of things that Fat Paps might be into. Who knows? Fat Paps might be a furry for all we know. Anyways, I think that's all I really have to address, but let's move on to the next game, Escape the Hotel. Escape the Hotel is the second installment of the Fat Paps Obbies, and already by just playing this game, we start to see the games lower in quality drastically. Before I get into the actual content itself, you'll notice that playing this game and a few more of them after this is this giant banner telling you to subscribe to the Fat Paps channel himself, which I have mentioned beforehand. You start the game by going out of your hotel room and notice that your door is locked, so you have to jump into the vent inside your bathroom to try and start escaping. Then you have to parkour your way in and out of the ventilation system. Then after that you go across a lengthy corridor with a broken floor and lasers to try to make your way to an elevator. But whoops, the elevator's broken and you'll have to use the fire exit to find another way. You make your way to a swimming pool and you have to drain it to progress. You fall into the boiler room and you have to escape. On the way out, you'll actually find a physical standing of Fat Paps promoting his YouTube channel. After getting out of the boiler room, you're greeted with another corridor that is distorted so much you think you're having one of those insane visions from Cry of Fear. After that, you reach an elevator that works. Psych! It breaks down completely and you have to climb up the elevator shaft. I mean, wow Fat Paps, you really shocked me with this one. Then we have to go through this grotesque room that totally doesn't give me that weird adult stuff that I mentioned earlier. Then we take an elevator out and surprise surprise, this elevator actually works. You're finally back outside of the hotel, and to finish off the game, you zipline down from the hotel to the beach, and that's Escape the Hotel. In terms of the visual appeal, this is definitely a few steps down from the first game, and not just because of the textures. When you look at the exterior details outside in the first game, there was a considerable amount of detail that took your breath away when looking at it. But in Escape the Hotel, this isn't the case anymore. The outside map now looks way too simplistic and you really can't enjoy it that much anymore. One of the suggestions that I made when finishing the obby is that I wish that the city was actually explorable. Again, this would really help people continue playing the game even though they've managed to complete the obby. Sadly, this potential is wasted. Despite the downgrade, the maps are still quite good and there's still plenty of variety in the courses themselves, overall making a still somewhat enjoyable experience. The final rating that I'm going to give this game is a 5 out of 10, and it's going to be ranked 8th on the best to worst list. Moving to the third game, we have Escape the Dungeon. I mean, most of the Fat Paps obbies have to involve you escaping something, which does kind of get boring after a while, but I digress. You wake up in a dungeon cell and you have to go to the... Wait a minute. This is the exact same sequence of events as the first game. The dungeon, the lava room, the traps, the flight of stairs, the chest room, they're all the exact same. This just reaffirms that Escape the Castle Fortress is in fact a remake. I mean, after this point, there is a little bit of variation, but it's still the same overall course of events, almost down to the T. Don't touch the floor, lower a drawbridge, go through a big red dragon, I'm holding it back, go out of the dragon, and then basically do one long ass walk back to the castle and reach the winner's room. 
I'm not kidding. He literally was too lazy to add a few more courses, so you have to do this super long walk. It honestly feels like Fat Paps just gave up making new courses and was like, yeah, let's just let them walk over to the winners. I'm too lazy to make any new courses. To sum this game in a few words, it's a much crappier version of Escape the Castle Fortress. Most of the courses are the same, the aesthetics look way more dated, especially with the compressed image textures. <laughs> there is no combat system, and the ending was super anticlimactic. This game gets a 3 out of 10 and gets 11th place on the best to worst list. This is definitely one of the more terrible obbies on this list, and I'd much rather you play Escape the Castle Fortress for a much better experience. Moving on, we have Escape the School. Now, the concept of using an obby to escape school is definitely not a new concept. Doing obbies on escaping school has been around longer than I have been around on the Roblox platform. And just for reference, I joined Roblox at the beginning of 2010. Already we are off to a bad start here because the idea for this obby is completely uninspired. Also, there is the Fat Paps banner, and I forgot to count the last one. However, when I take a look at the obby courses, the quality of the obbies have gone drastically downhill. It seems like we've moved away from a lot of the remakes and revisions era, and we're now going into what seems to be the early age of the Fat Paps era. It's clear that these games are probably not going to be remastered or remade anytime soon, because what's the point? This obby is quite dated because there's almost no depth in the map at this point, and there's almost no attention to detail at all. When I look and play through these maps, these maps just are painfully generic. It just feels like I'm back in the year 2014. The NPC for this game is beyond creepy as a Mr. Meeseeks face does not go well with a human skin tone or a human head for that matter. Not only that, but the overall courses start to lack variety as well. It's just a bunch of jumping over things for the most part and some basic platforming. Also, this game plugs a YouTuber that finally isn't Fat Paps, but rather another Let's Player Dennis who I believe doesn't really play Roblox anymore. It really just comes to show that this game probably doesn't get updated anymore. But a plug is still a plug. This is quickly followed by another plug for another channel named Sploshy. I actually didn't know who Sploshy is prior to this video, so I actually looked up the channel myself, and I think Sploshy was supposed to be a sister channel of Fat Paps considering that they have made videos that are also on the Fat Paps channel. However, the channel stopped uploading content in 2018 and hasn't made another video since, presumably making it a dead YouTube channel. Out of all the YouTube plugs that I've come across though, I find this YouTube plug in particular kind of scummy. Because when I got to this point, I came across a safe door, and to open it, you have to find the code from watching one of Sploshy's videos. Fortunately, this turns out to not be the case, and you can still progress the game as normal. However, it is quite misleading that it does not mention at all that this is something that is optional, and that you could continue the obby if you just simply open the door behind you. I did actually look up a video to see what is behind this safe door, and it turns out that all that's behind this safe is a pointless Roblox badge. I understand that the point of this was to promote your YouTube channel, but unlike the Fat Paps banner, this is a way scummier method of getting engagement on your content and getting subs in general. Unfortunately, this isn't the only game where this sort of thing happens, but I still really do not agree with this kind of YouTube advertising. So I'm fast forwarding through a lot of this obby because it pretty much follows a lot of your generic escape school obbies. You escape a freezer, travel through more corridors, go through a school locker, go through a science room where a science experiment has gone wrong. Oh my god. You finally get out of the school and you have to drive a vehicle over a cliff and you walk your way over to a secret cave to win the game. This obby was 
quite a generic obby, and like Escape the Hotel, the visuals for this game were quite dated, even more dated in fact. Combine that with some of the deceiving YouTuber plugs and the lack of variety for the courses, this game was quite boring to play. The only thing that stops the obby from completely sucking is the fact that you can replay the obby under time trials to try and complete the obby as fast as you can, which is a better method of replayability than any of the other methods that we've been given so far. And in addition, it at least tries to keep all of the courses to a basic theme. I'm giving it a final score of 2 out of 10 and scoring it on number 12 on the best to worst list, being somehow worse than Escape the Dungeon. You're probably thinking, with how bad Escape the School was, what could possibly be worse than this? The answer is the next obby on our list, Escape the Dentist. I think Escape the Dentist is probably the oldest obby from Fat Paps that is still playable. The visuals look even more dated than Escape the School, so much to the point where the water textures being used remind me of the Wipeout obby that got copied and pasted to death. The maps have little to no depth at all, like I'm talking about a 10 year old could recreate these maps because of how basic they are. While there is slightly more variety in these courses than Escape the School, this obby still lacks a ton of variety on the courses. In addition, Escaping the Dentist was also another common theme to base an obby around at the time, so it is equally as uninspiring. And you know what? I'm also going to be including Escape the Hospital in this segment as well, as they're pretty much the same game with slightly different themes. They recycle a lot of the same courses from each other, courses that are unfortunately way too easy and as a result, incredibly boring. I think the only thing that I've noticed unique about Escape the Dentist is that it doesn't actually prompt you with a microtransaction every death. And hey, this is probably because Fabhaps doesn't even bother updating the game to ensure the same aggressive monetization system. I mean, the TV at the beginning of the game looked like it had way more effort put into it than the entire game, and that's because this image sequence is supposed to represent another game, Arsenal. I could have had loads of fun playing Arsenal rather than playing 20 stages of absolute boring and 22 more stages of suffering. The only reason why I wouldn't give either one of these games a 0 out of 10 is because they at least try to establish a theme and they are bearable compared to the absolute cesspool that is these 1000 plus stage autonomous obbies. Both Escape the Dentist and Escape the Hospital are a 2 out of 10, and these are dead last on the best to worst, with Escape the Hospital only being slightly above Escape the Dentist, as Escape the Hospital makes minor improvements to the overall quality, but it isn't far off from just being Escape the Dentist 2. Also, there weren't any other YouTube plugs other than the obvious banner. Alright, so after knocking out two diseased birds with one stone, we're gonna go over Escape the Bowling Alley. Now, I believe this is the game where we start to see a slow return in quality. It's only a notch below Escape the Hotel. I will say the textures establish some sort of environment, but I don't get any immersion from this. There are some pretty creative maps that are seen throughout the entire obby, which have a little bit of detail but are still pretty generic overall. In terms of the gameplay, the obby courses are not as unique as some of the first few obbies we've looked at, but there is clear compensation for some redundant courses by changing up the art style a little bit. For example, instead of just spilling more lava jumps, there is a sequence of conveyors that chop wood instead. Instead of just being lava checkers, there is acid dripping from the ceiling that works with the environment. 
there is a level where you have to avoid rolling bowling balls that travel down a path, which is unrealistic, don't get me wrong, but it at least had some creativity to it. It's because of these artistic variations that at least makes some repetition a bit more bearable. Now, there are some courses that do have obvious inspiration and don't really derive too much from their sources, such as the incoming wall in the huge bowling alley corridor. It's clearly inspired by Nintendo Zachary's Be Crushed by a Speeding Wall. This obby consists of yet another 20 stages, and once you complete it, you do have the ability to do time trials just like in Escape the School. However, considering that this version of Escape the Bowling Alley is a re-upload of the original, there aren't any badges that you can obtain from this obby, so there's pretty much no point in doing them other than just for fun. This obby so far is the most guilty when it comes to plugs. At the beginning of the obby, we see the same scummy safe from Splashy that was in Escape the School. At the beginning of the bowling ball wall course, there is another plug from Dennis. Outside of the claw machine, we see two different plugs. One plug for Guava Juice and a plug for another YouTuber, AshDubH, a Let's Player whose YouTube channel is now deleted. Surprisingly, none of them are fat paps. Well, if you don't count Splashy, that is. I'm sure that if we were to be playing these games in chronological order, I'm sure this is supposed to be the point where we see Fat Paps start to improve in quality. But in my perspective, I see this as the beginning of a renaissance. I'm gonna give this game a 4 out of 10, and I'm gonna place it above Escape the Dungeon at number 10 in the best to worst list. Now we'll be moving on to Escape the Carnival of Terror. This game is pretty much the resurgence of Fat Paps. Escape the Carnival of Terror is going to be the first of a few horror obbies that we're going to be seeing in this episode, and this game sets precedence that a lot of the later horror obbies will follow. When joining this game, the detail that goes into the maps and overall graphics increase tenfold, taking use of textures, particle systems, custom meshes that look half decent, and everything overall looks fairly modern. In fact, trying to run the game on Linux actually made my game lag a little bit because of all the details that needed to be loaded. When looking around the environments, you can see the attention to detail in the maps that are created, and it looks pretty good for a Roblox obby. This is further supported by its sound design, as the sound design works really well with the maps to establish an atmosphere and enhance the horror aspect of the game. For example, the floating balloons make a nice sound when landing on them. Or the steam sounds when steam bursts out of pipes. It's little details like these that really help enhance the overall game. This is the best obby from Fat Paps in terms of the visual details, and no other obby from Fat Paps comes close to this obby. Even though the game is meant to have a horror theme to it, it honestly doesn't feel like a horror game at all. This is the only horror obby from Fat Paps that doesn't really try to be scary, so I will not be reviewing this game based on a horror factor, but rather just a normal obby. Another thing that I have noticed when playing this game is how the checkpoint system works. In the previous obbies I've reviewed so far, you have to manually step on a spawn plate in order to establish that you've made it to the next stage and progress. In this obby, that is not the case. Checkpoints in Escape the Carnival of Terror are actually region based. So as long as you go to the general area that is considered a checkpoint, you immediately advance to the next stage. There are only a few other Fat Paps obbies that do this mechanic, and I wish Fat Paps would use this mechanic a lot more. In terms of game design, it adds an additional affordance of not having to worry if you touch the checkpoint or not, 
making the overall gameplay a lot smoother. This game also makes greater emphasis on the dialogue. Instead of making the dialogue something that is optional, it is forced upon your screen at the beginning of every checkpoint. However, like the previous games, the writing for the dialogue doesn't really try to convey a story as much as it is trying to tell the player what's up ahead or trying to explain how certain mechanics work. But let's talk about some of the courses themselves. For the first half of the game, you have a lot of your standard courses that have been beautified to work with the horror theme. However, one new type of course that we see in this game is the chase sequence. When you run to the ferris wheel, a killer clown starts chasing you and you have to evade the clown while getting on the ferris wheel. If you get caught, you die and you have to start all over again. Pay attention to this type of course because you are going to see this be used in later horror obbies. But one level that stood out to me the most was the first level in the fun house. On the surface, it is your regular lava jumps, but every time that you jump over a killing part, you notice that your field of view starts to widen. Considering that this is a fun house, the courses that are incorporated are meant to be a little distorting, but I like the experimentation that goes on with even such a basic course, such as jumping over kill parts. Another good course is where you have to travel across an octagonal grid to the other side, but the thing is you don't want to stay in the same place as tiles start falling upon touching them, forcing the player to quickly figure out how to navigate their way to the other side without dying. This is the kind of experimentation that I am looking for and I wish Fat Paps would try to do this thing more with his obbies. Finding new types of courses could really benefit his games because it would help make the obbies much more enjoyable to play overall instead of just recycling the same type of courses over and over again. The variety of obby courses is on par with the first game. The game ends by you having to ride an almost defunct roller coaster that eventually malfunctions by launching outside of the carnival and then you get to the winner's area. Throughout this game, I've only noticed one YouTuber plug, and that was Dennis in the Steam Room. Overall, this is definitely one of the best obbies to come from Fat Paps, earning a score of 7 out of 10 and placing it above Escape the Castle Fortress at number 2 in the best to worst list. This obby felt fresh and completely new, and I enjoyed playing it. This is where part one ends. This is about as far as I got when it came to uh, editing the video where I feel like I'm confident with how I edited this video. Now, I did sound pretty negative for the most part and that's because the beginning of Fat Paps Obbies really isn't that great and it's mainly a lot of the later releases that tend to be better. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed part one and if you want to see part two sooner, uh, please be sure to like and subscribe. That's all I have to say and take care.